If you haven't done so yet, make sure you pause the video and try to solve the question on your own first before listening on. In order to determine the volume of this solid that is formed by rotating the region about the x-axis, we have to first graph these four curves so that we can see the region. So let's go ahead and do that. And so we have the curve that kind of slopes downward here, and that curve is y equals 1 over x. And then the x-axis itself is the graph of y equals 0. And then we have the vertical lines x equals 1 and then x equals 4. And we can see that they mark off this region that we have shaded in gray. Now we're going to take that region and rotate it about the x-axis. So we have to imagine that we're spinning this region around the x-axis. And as we do that, it's going to form a solid whose volume we're going to calculate. So here is what that solid would look like. It kind of looks like a megaphone or a speaker, perhaps. And again, we're trying to find the volume of that. And the way to do that is to select a point along the curve. It doesn't really matter where along the curve. Somewhere in the middle is fine or even off to the side just a little bit. So let's just select a point on the curve right here. And what we're going to do is draw a circular cross section that cuts through the interior of this figure. So we'll go ahead and we'll try to draw a very thin circular cross section. It might look something like that. And in fact, it's not actually a circle. It's a squashed or flattened disc, almost like a cylinder. And so we can give it a little bit of thickness to show that it is indeed a flattened cylinder. And so that's the cross section here. Now our goal is to set up an expression for the volume of this flattened cylinder that we just drew. And in general, we know that the volume of a cylinder is equal to pi times its radius squared multiplied by its height. Now if we look at this picture here of this red cylinder, we can see that the radius would be measured from here to right there. That would be the radius of our cylinder. And then the height of our cylinder is a very tiny dimension. It's only about that thick right there. And you'll notice that the thickness is measured in a horizontal orientation. In other words, we're measuring the thickness in a left to right direction. And the left to right direction, of course, is the x direction. And because it's such a small measurement, what we say in calculus is that that measurement is equal to dx as opposed to x, since it's a very tiny dimension. As for the radius, we can see that it is a vertical measurement. It's going up and down. And of course, a vertical measurement is equal to y. And so we can come over to our volume expression for that cylinder, and we can substitute a couple of things in here. As we said, the radius is y, so we can plug that in. And then the height of our flattened cylinder is dx. So that would represent the volume of just that one cylinder. But what we want to do is actually calculate the volume of many of those cylinders. And so we could draw, technically, an infinite number of them. We could draw one here, and then another one here, and so on. And then what we would do is calculate the individual volumes of those disks, add them together, and that would give us the volume of our actual solid structure that we're trying to determine the volume of. That's a little bit tedious, of course, to calculate the volume of an infinite number of cylinders. And so what we do is we integrate across the entire length of the curve. Now, the curve begins at x equals 1 and then finishes at x equals 4. So we're going to integrate from x equals 1 to x equals 4, and that will accomplish the goal of determining the volume of all of those cylindrical disks that we could have drawn. Now, coming back over here, we can see that we have y, and then we're integrating with respect to x. That is basically an inconsistency. We don't want to have y integrating with respect to x. So what we can do is replace y with its function in terms of x. So we know that y is equal to 1 over x, so we can come in here and substitute in 1 over x for that y, and then still integrate with respect to x. So now we have a consistency of variables, and we're able to evaluate the expression. And before we can do that, we can simplify the expression just a little bit. We have 1 over x squared, which is equivalent to 1 over x multiplied by 1 over x. And when we multiply these fractions, we would multiply the numerators to get 1, and then multiply the denominators to get x squared. In addition, pi being a constant can be removed outside of the integral. And then in order to integrate 1 over x squared, it's a good idea to bring the variable up to the numerator. Now when we change the variable to the other side of a fraction, we have to negate its exponent. And so this expression becomes x raised to the negative 2 dx. 
And then of course we can now integrate. So when we integrate, we're going to add one to the exponent. That's going to give us x to the negative one. And then we divide by that new exponent, which is negative one. And then we're evaluating this from one to four. We could then clean it up just a little bit. Pi divided by negative one would be negative pi. And then this x raised to the power of negative one can be written as one over x. That's the same rule as before. We're basically switching the x to the denominator, and when we do that, we're gonna change that negative one exponent to a positive one. We'll go ahead and plug in the upper limit of integration in for x first, and then the lower limit second. And then of course we subtract those results. Now 1 fourth minus one is going to give us negative 3 fourths. And then when we multiply negative pi by negative 3 fourths, we're going to get a positive 3 pi over four. And that turns out to be the volume of that region that we obtained by rotating around the x-axis. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click thumbs up and subscribe so you could stay tuned for similar videos. Remember that you can send in your own question and I'll do my best to post the answer to it on YouTube.